Hello students, welcome back for the online lectures of the Material Science and Metallurgy. Myself Vivek Pare, taking the lectures on your corrosion of metals and alloy. Okay, so now we have discussed about the different types of the corrosion, what is corrosion, what is the effect of the corrosion and now we have left with the three types of the corrosion method. So, in today's lecture we will be discussing that three remaining types of the thing of the corrosion which are the types of the corrosion and then we will proceed further with our preventive measure that means how we can prevent the corrosion okay so let us start our today's lecture with our very first topic that is known as an erosion corrosion you are knowing or you are aware about the word that is known as an erosion erosion that means whatever the thing or the layer which is removed away with the flow of any of the liquid and all that is known as an erosion that means if there is a flood is there in a river then whatever the water gets water when it enters the field then that is known as an erosion what will happen due to that erosion the crops which are planted that gets removed the same thing happens over here so as the crops are removed the same way if the metal part is removed or with the help of that corrosion and whatever the thing which happens that is known as an erosion corrosion let us see what is this erosion corrosion it is the result of relative movement between the corrosive flu fluid and the metal surface that means whatever the thing in or due to that particular movement of your metal inside that fluid that is known as an erosion corrosion all types of equipment which are exposed to the fluid then there are major chances of erosion corrosion are likely to occur where we can use the surface chemistry plays a role in the erosion corrosion due to the mechanochemical effect that means whatever the thing that is a ship propeller hydraulic turbine pump impeller they are constant in touch with the water and all that thing you can see whatever the propeller ship propeller is there they, it is direct or continuous in contact with the water so what will happen due to that water there is a erosion corrosion which is going to take place you can see over here due to this thing this is a pipe fitting is there due to the constant motion of the water slowly and steadily it will remove the metal and as a result you can see the surface is getting corroded you can see ultimately there is only a small portion is there as the motion moves due to that thing there will be increase in the corrosion you can see over here due to the constant motion of the fluid the slowly and steadily the corrosion effect which can be seen on the material and as a result of which the corrosion will take place and ultimately you can see or you have heard that after some time each and every sheep is going to get retired nowadays only we have seen that INS Vikrant has been moved why still it is in motion why we have done that thing because there are chances of getting corrosion which has taken place inside that thing and ultimately any day and any time it can fail so as a result of which the erosion corrosion can create a major damage where which are in constant touch of the fluid which are corrosive in nature for that thing the erosion corrosion are likely to happen next one that is known as an hydrogen damage it is one of the special kind of the thing which is going to occur that is the hydrogen damage hydrogen damage is the process within the various metals most importantly in the high strength steel wherever we are using the high strength steel then hydrogen is the major contender for the corrosion and that thing that is known as an hydrogen damage what will happen when that hydrogen reacts with the metal it will form the hydride and that hydride they are brittle and which will fracture upon certain load hydrogen damage is often reserved for the unintentional introduction that means we are not introducing hydrogen but by any sources if hydrogen get introduced inside the material that will form the hydride and the material becomes the brittle so here you can see over here the material h2 void the h atoms these h atoms whatever they are produced this will go inside that thing and you can see over here the corrosion taking place so what will happen due to this hydride film is formed over the surface and that hydride they are brittle in nature and ultimately your material will try to fail okay and now our last type of the corrosion that is known as a selective leaching we are intentionally adding some of the portion inside that thing 
selective leaching also called de-alloying demetallification parting and selective corrosion if you want to remove that or if you want to bifurcate the two different metals for that purpose we are using the selective leaching what we will be doing we will be introducing some of the liquid inside the material that liquid suppose there is an alloy which is made up of a and b what will happen for bifurcation of the two metals we are adding some liquid what will happen that liquid will corrode any one metal and due to that corrosion of that one metal what will happen the another metal will be as it is so it will corrode one metal what we were requiring we want to separate both the metal and as a result corrosion will take place only in one metal the other metal will be safe enough and that is known as a selective leaching clear so this is this type of the corrosion we are intentionally doing inside the material for this de-alloying demetallification of the thing Selective leaching is a corrosion process in which one of an alloy is preferentially dissolved by the environment leaving the de-alloyed metal weak after that corrosion. So here you can see the area. This is the corroded area. This is non-corroded white color that is non-corroded area. That means we are corroding one metal intentionally for removal of the metal. Okay. So these are the different types of the corrosion which are happening in the environment. Let us briefly just say shortly no corrosive material it is this type of the general corrosion you can see the whole surface has been removed uniform corrosion it's another name is uniform corrosion galvanic you can see the area which is inside that thing this two metals anode cathode this is your cathode this is your anode so cathode is getting corroded you can see erosion due to the movement of the material corrosion taking place three wise the underneath material getting corroded pitting in the form of the pits they are getting corroded leaching intentionally we are doing the corrosion intergranular from grains to grains you can see the corrosion occurred and there is a stress corrosion which is going to happen the many branches you can see what are the remaining that is the fatigue corrosion hydrogen corrosion and these are the things different types of the corrosion which are going to take place so we have discussed all the major types of the corrosions which are occurring in the environment okay so now moving forward for our next topic that is if these corrosions are going to occur then which are the different methods through which we can prevent this type of the corrosion the very first method that is proper selection of the material and proper designing by doing this we can avoid the corrosion Second thing, modification of the environment. If you can modify the environment, then also this type of the thing happen. That means we can reduce the corrosion. Third one, by using the special alloys, we can go for the prevention. Then by anodic and cathodic protection, this is the majorly used for that sheets and all that thing. Anodic and cathodic protection, that is thing. And last one, that is the application of the protective coating and the inhibitors. So these are the different likely occurring methods through which we can avoid the corrosion. Let us discuss all these things out of that very first one by proper selection of the material and the design. There are many different types of the things. So first one selection of the material. Metals at anodic end are more resistant than at anodic end. So select that metal in such a way that whatever the metal you want to save that should always be in the form of your cathode coarser grain material have higher resistance coarser means a uh, thick areas a uh, thick branches you can see if this is the thing if these materials are having this type of the coarser grains so what will happen they are corrosion resistant as compared to the finer finer world means the small types of the grain so the coarser one you should use so what will happen they are more corrosion resistant pure metal have more corrosion resistant you will be shocked to know that uh, iron which is in the pure form iron in a pure form they are the corrosion resistance they are the corrosion resistant the wrought iron wrought iron is 99.9 percent .9 pure iron and it is having a corrosion resistance okay so if you are using a pure metal then there are very much less amount of chances of the corrosion to occur by alloying increases both mechanical properties and corrosion resistance that is the simple thing by if we are applying a, any alloying element inside a material then we can go for the corrosion resistance use simple design or use a single metal avoid the 
thing that is avoid going for the alloys then also you can have a more core resistance that is the corrosion cold work material corrodes faster as compared to the annealed annealed that is the heat treatment which we have discussed in our unit number 7 that means if you are going for the annealing what will happen the stresses which are there will be removed and as a result of which the resistance of the corrosion will be improved and the last one that is the rough surface have less corrosion as compared to your smooth surface if you are having a smoother surface then it will give you the higher corrosion resistance as compared to the rough one proper design if you go so proper design you can see if this is the thing poor design why because there are chances of the material for getting over here which will be over here there are chances of material to get over here the corrosion are likely to occur so avoid this type of the thing use this thing so what will happen the material will directly move into it second one you can see avoid the corner sharp corner you should avoid you give in, if you give such type of the thing what will happen corrosion that way erosion corrosion will not take place in this but here erosion corrosion are likely to occur over this place what will happen the stagnant area is there so there will be a chances of the crevice corrosion here also sharp edges is there give a curvature one the second type of the design for the welding if you are seeing this is the poor design why because there is a thing which the corrosion will occur over here but if you are going for this type of the thing there are less chances of the corrosion you can see over here this type of the corrosion there is a sum of the thing or here you can corrosion takes place but here if you close from both the sides that is a good design through which we can avoid corrosion if there are gaps which are there between the corrosion if there is a gaps which are remaining between the corrosion between the welding then there are likely chances of corrosion to take place so in a single weld go for this type of the welding so that you can avoid this type of the thing so this is the thing where corners majorly you should avoid the sharp corners and edges so that the corrosion can be avoided so this is by the proper design okay so our very first method by using a proper design and material you can avoid the corrosion let us move forward for the modification of the environment the second method for the prevention that is the modification of the environment so how you can go so the method this method plays a major role for the changing of the environment that means whatever the area where you are doing the work and if that is a corrosive environment you have to modify that thing how we can modify that thing there are four methods first one deaeration second one deactivation third one dehumidification and the fourth one that is alkaline neutralization let us study all this thing the first one deaeration as the name suggests if you remove the air or if you cannot remove the air then you can remove the oxygen by doing this thing what will happen deaeration method so the oxygen will be less and as a result there will be no corrosion go for the vacuum then also we can avoid corrosion or if you cannot go for the vacuum then you have to remove the oxygen so that what will happen the oxygen will not react with the metal and as a result your corrosion resistance will take place this can be achieved how we can remove the oxygen by increasing the temperature of electrolyte together with a mechanical agitation so what if you are having a solution then what you will be doing increase the temperature of that thing and mechanical agitation by doing it what will happen the material will be having a less oxygen reactivity and as a result no oxygen will react with the metal and due to which what will happen corrosion resistance take place second one deactivation in deactivation certain chemicals are added which combines rapidly with the oxygen so we are introducing some of the metals in the atmosphere which will react with the oxygen rapidly and as a result what will happen the oxygen will settle down with that material and it will not go for the material for the corrosion so as a result we can save the material example sodium sulfate hydrazine hydrate see these are the material by which oxygen will quickly react with this material and as a result our job or our material will be safe enough from the corrosion the third method which we will be using that is a dehumidification 
if there is a humidification humidity is more inside the material you have to remove that humidity how dehumidification reduces the moisture of air and as a result what will happen the metal which is getting corroded will be there how we can go for that thing you might be knowing about the silica gel and all that silica gel which is always kept inside a electronic item so if there is a water or any such type of the humidity is there inside the material it will take away any of the electronic circuit always has a silica gel because if there is a humidity inside a material it will directly absorb so such type of the thing silica gel alumina all that thing they are the dehumidification that means if they are kept in the air what will happen they will absorb all the humidity with them and as a result the humidity will decrease and your material will be safe from the corrosion where we can do this thing dehumidification in the laboratories computer room such type of the air condition shop we can go for this dehumidification this is the cheap form of the thing for the corrosion resistance and the last one by introducing alkaline neutralization so they are used to prevent the corrosion effect environment by neutralizing the acidic character of the corrosive condition so here what we are using alkaline neutralization like nh3 naoh lime v which are basic in nature which we are using so what will happen an acidic medium will be converted neutral by adding the base so here also we are using if there is a acidic means if you are working in some acid factories and all that thing there is always a different types of the acids which are there in the gaseous form so for removal of that gaseous what we are introducing we are introducing the base in the atmosphere and due to that base what will happen it will be either reduced or it will neutralize the effect and as a result of which the corrosion resistance will take place how we are introducing we are injected either in the vapor or the liquid form okay so this was our second method that was of the modification of the corrosive environment so the remaining four methods of the corrosion prevention we will be studying in our upcoming lecture so in this we have studied three types of the corrosion and two methods of the corrosion prevention method okay so next lecture will be our last lecture for our corrosion of metals and alloys clear so till then thank you